In this talk, I will share a Twitter story building feature stores. Um, I will assume that the audience here is on some level familiar with feature stores and the motivation behind them. So I will not focus on that. So the need for something to manage ML features came early at Twitter, uh, but attempts up to like three, four years ago were driven primarily by product ML teams and none of them quite stuck. Um, we identified several main reasons for this, both technical and organizational. So for example, one solution using a, a single proxy service ran into operational issues for the owning team and latency costs incurred by the service in the middle. Um, in another case, there was fragmented feature data and transformations ownership, which meant poor maintenance of features and extra overhead for the team owning the system. And the owning team being a product team versus a platform team meant that meant weak platform ownership. So there were little incentives in operating the infrastructure for other teams. This, um, as well as the increased investment in a global ML platform at Twitter led to a small but dedicated team to begin building a global feature store solution. And what we currently refer to as feature store 1.0 was built as a virtual feature store. Um, the distinction between virtual and feature stores, I think is now well known in the space. Virtual stores essentially represent a framework for registering and accessing features in a uniform way from already existing data. And physical stores, on the other hand, incorporate physical components like pipelines for data ingestion and aggregation, actual, the actual data storage in data lakes and in real time serving solutions and, and services for access to the features and, and so on. All of this managed by, um, by the team that owns the, the feature store. So why did we start with a virtual feature store? So virtual stores are quicker to build and to enable for multiple customers with limited resources for operational overhead. Plus, Twitter already had a huge number of data sources available both in data lakes and in real-time serving solutions, and many of them already used as, as ML data. Um, the physical and operational cost of extra duplication was high, um, especially given that our vision was to have all features for all, all teams um, be in the feature store. Twitter also had existing frameworks for aggregating batch and real-time data, and so making that data easily accessible and shareable was what was needed. And the North Star was, when we started, was sharing. So we wanted to quickly facilitate the reuse of features, making features from large teams with a lot of resources available to smaller teams that were just starting with ML. So in its core, Feature Store 1.0 is a JVM-based library for registering reusable extraction and transformation logic. Client code for accessing the underlying data, applying these transformations in on online and offline settings in a consistent way. Um, we are particularly proud of um, the easy to use APIs. Um, our domain specific language for registering features allowed for almost all types of transformations that our customers came up with. For example, feature process, like um, a feature computed from some user data and some tweet data on the fly or feature aggregations for getting the say average age of all mentioned users in a tweet, uh, which we will automatically, for which we will automatically fetch the age for all user identifiers um, in, in the request and average it. We refer to this as entity management. So in addition to managing the raw feature and indexes, we, um, we also manage how it all comes together for a given model. The guiding principle was that after some initial setup, um, adding a new feature is a one-line effort um, in some configuration file, for example. This solution is still a GA system at Twitter with pretty wide adoption, both in the number of teams using it and in the features registered. Um, and here I want to mention that a couple of years ago, we did our first evaluation of Feast um, as something we could potentially integrate with. Um, however, the infancy of Feast as open source software at the time and, and the big difference in the tech stack and in the approach um, led us to pass at the time. Um, we were acting to quite a few challenges with our first generation feature store. Um, because performance was not our North Star um, and our online clan was kind of trying to do it all, we ran into a lot of latency related challenges with some very high throughput low latency use cases. Um, for example, some of the advertising related models or the scoring of thousands of tweet candidates for the Twitter home feed of tweets. 
Um, also, while our offline access API allowed for time consistent joins, it was based on scouting and Hadoop, um, not very fast, unfortunately. And for many customers, it was still easier to fetch feature data online, like log it or, or scribe it for a long period of time, sometimes months, and then use that as their training data. Um, and there was still a large operational burden on feature producers who owned offline and online storage of the data. Last year, um, the ML platform began moving towards uh, GCP in a hybrid cloud strategy. So the new tech stack and the new customer challenges around getting data to and from the cloud required a new approach. For the next generation feature management, we had a few added goals to take on more of the data operational burden for, from customers, fast online performance, and to speed up offline experimentation with features were some of them. In spring last year, we did another evaluation of Feast. Um, and at this point, our stack seemed to have aligned. So Feast's uh, plug-in play model provided a lot of flexibility. And we were eager to integrate more open source software in the ML platform in general. So we decided to adopt Feast as the framework to bring it all together. And here is the bird's eye view of our system. It consists of various offline and online storage infrastructure, all tied together through Feast. One key difference from our previous iteration is that as much as possible, feature transformations are pre-materialized in storage rather than performed on the fly. Um, we have done quite a few contributions to enable Feast for our use cases and have taken advantage of the flexible model to enable our own online storage. So what's next for our next gen feature store? Well, we are excited about continuing working with the Feast community and push the limits of Feast with more Twitter heavy use cases. Uh, we are building a highly performant direct fetching client, but we will also be working towards integrating feature hydration and model serving in a single managed service as an option for our customers. And um, while streaming and on-demand transformation existed in our old stack to some degree, we still need to bring those to our next generation platform and are looking forward to making use of the functionality that the Feast community has been adding in this space and contributing to it. Data quality monitoring and better linking of model and feature metadata is also something on our list. So here's some lessons. Um, we had more than what I can fit on the slide, um, but some of my favorites here. Um, probably geared more towards companies with multiple ML teams and considering having a global feature store. Um, as hard as it is to build a global feature store, it results in an active feature marketplace and community. And we really enjoyed watching that grow. So feature stores can target many different problems in feature management, in the feature management space, like discoverability or feature generation, aggregation, offline experimentation, versioning, embedding support, um, to name a few. And they can look very different depending on that. So can be good at one thing and not at another. So be sure to understand what aspect of feature management matters to you the most and pick a good North Star. We got a bit burned with um, chasing some very specific feature transformation use cases. Um, and we intend to not do this with our second generation store. Um, another one uh, was around guaranteeing consistent runtime performance. Um, which we thought impossible that for every imaginable access pattern. Um, so investing early in benchmarking and also setting the expectations with customers uh, can help with that. All right, this was quick and high level overview of our story, but if I have piqued your interest, feel free to reach out to us in the Feast Tecton Slack channel.